Oh man, what a tough day at school. But when I have really tough days, the best treat is Ben and Jerry's. Oh man, peanut butter is my favorite. Ben and Jerry's flavor. Mmm. Oh man. Woo! That makes the whole day better. Another tough day, but I still got my Ben and Jerry's. Hopefully it's still good. It's as hard as a rock. Guys, welcome to the first meeting of the MIT Ice Cream Connoisseurs Club. Yeah! MIT IC Cubed. Clever name if I do say so myself. Anyway, so as our first meeting, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about something that really bothered me yesterday. I opened up my ice cream that's been only in the freezer for two weeks, and it's as hard as a rock. That happens to me all the time. I hate that. Why does it happen? Well, I did my research yesterday on the peanut cluster, and it's called Ostwald ripening. So, Ostwald ripening is this equation. It's shenanigans, right? You can see there's lots of variables, there's a derivative, there's an average radius, there's whatever. But don't worry about that now, we'll understand that better later. But basically, Oswald ripening is an observed phenomenon where smaller crystals in solution shrink and disappear, and their atoms diffuse in solution and redeposit themselves on larger crystals in solution. So the larger crystals grow and the smaller crystals shrink. Oswald ripening is a thermodynamic process, so okay, therm, meaning energy, heat, dynamic, movement. So it's like the movement of energy, right? In any system, the system wants to basically minimize its energy, okay? So in solution with large crystals and small crystals, the large crystals actually have lower energy than the small crystals. And this is due to the fact that the particles on the surface of the crystals are higher in energy than the particles on the nicely ordered inside, as you can imagine a crystal might be. So basically, larger particles, less energy, smaller particles, more energy, and thus the system wants to make more larger particles and less smaller particles. Hey, Ron, why are the molecules on the surface energetically less stable? So why are particles in a crystal on the surface less energetically stable than particles in the interior, okay? Why do they have more energy than particles in the interior? So I'll explain. Consider a cube. This is a crystal, okay? This is like an ice crystal. This is any crystal, okay? But let's, in this scenario where we have ice cream, which is basically ice, cream, and sugar, this is the ice crystals in solution, okay? So here are the atoms of, of uh, like a water atom in this crystal. Look at this atom in the center, all right? If you look at all of the bonds that it's connected to, to adjacent atoms, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the one in the middle has six bonds. It's really happy because all of the electrons are in between the bonds with all of its neighbors, okay? Now, let's look at one on the surface, okay? Let's count how many, how many bonds it has here. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's one that's kind of dangling, that's not attached to anything. So that's pretty high energy. It's energetically unstable because you have this dangling bond, which is basically electrons orbiting around the atom, here without a place to be, nice and centered locally around between the atoms of one and the atoms of the other. So this is really energetically unfavorable. And that's why the, the atoms on the surface are more energetically, uh, have more energy than atoms in the interior. And the reason why larger crystals are less, have less energy than smaller crystals is because if you look at the ratio between the atoms in the middle and the atoms on the outside, larger crystals have more atoms in the middle relative to atoms on the outside. And then smaller crystals have more atoms on the outside than atoms in the middle. That's just due to the fact that volume is proportional to r cubed, the radius of the crystal, and surface area is proportional to So why do the smaller crystals shrink? Ah, so why do smaller crystals shrink? And getting back to your original question. Okay, all right. 
So now we have this big crystal, all right? I made it make a little smaller version. Here's a large crystal in solution. Here's cream and sugar, right? This is your ice cream. This is the ice crystals that are inside the cream and sugar solution. And then here's your small crystal of water, okay? So basically, we have a, the system wants to decrease its total energy, right? We have high energy, low small crystals, low energy, big crystals. Okay, so this, an atom on this small crystal is going to want to detach. There's going to be a driving force for the atoms on the surface of this crystal, which are high energy, to detach, diffuse through the solution, basically just move through the solution, and then deposit on the larger crystal. And that larger crystal will grow. Therefore, the average crystal size in solution, if you imagine over time, this thing will shrink, this thing will grow, the average crystal size over time will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And actually, if you had an infinite time where you had your ice cream in the freezer, you'd get one big block of ice and then just cream and sugar underneath it. Now we'll have enough information to start dissecting this big, ugly equation right here that Oswald thankfully did all the math for us. Okay, so we talked previously about the average radius of the crystal solution. I say radius here is because in actuality, they are spheres in solution. Rather, the ice crystals are spheres in solution rather than cubes like we mentioned previously. So here's the average radius of the crystal in solution. Now we also talked about like different radiuses, radii of crystal at a given time. So we talked about small crystals with small radius, radii, big crystals with big radii. Okay, now this is a big, you know, shenanigans as I call it. This is a bunch of different constants, okay? But it deals with stuff that we mentioned earlier. This term is a surface energy term. It, deal, it talks about the surface energy between the solid and the liquid phase, right? So the solid ice crystal and the liquid cream and sugar phase, okay? This term deals with the diff diffusivity, right? Remember how we talked about how atoms and small crystals detach off the surface, diffuse through the cream and sugar, and then deposit themselves on the large crystals. So it deals with how easy it is for ice to diffuse through the cream and sugar. And then this is dealing with the concentration of the water in the whole ice cream itself. And this is another constant that you don't need to worry about, and this is temperature, okay? So obviously this is a uh, kinetically determined process because there's moving things, right? And that deals with pre temperature because obviously at smaller temperatures, atoms don't like to move. At, at hard, larger temperatures, it's really easy for atoms to move, okay? So that's why it's temperature dependent. And then here, this is the change in the radius of a crystal with respect to time, okay? Remember what we said. What do you expect, right? For, um, for crystals of small radius, radii, right, this term is going to be negative, okay? Which makes sense because this is a negative, and since A is small, this term is positive. So it's actually a whole negative, and that's what you see. So basically, at these dots, these are correspond to when A equals a average, okay? The radius is equal to the average radius at a given time, okay? So this, it's zero at that time because this term is zero. And then for A less than A average, so for A radius, radii less than A average, you're going to have dA dt less than zero, meaning it's actually going to shrink over time, okay? Now let's look at when A is greater than A average, right? This term is positive, you can see. It's in the first quad in, in, in the first quadrant. So that means for A greater than A average, DA dt is greater than zero, right? That's it. So basically, small crystals shrink, negative term here. Large crystals grow. And that's also all brightening for you. I got so inspired that I decided to actually go into the lab and watch Oswald ripening over time using a scanning electron microscope. So let's put on some ice cream onto the stage, just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's so much, so much. <laughs> That's good enough. Yeah. I can use an applicator. Yeah, all right, use that. Nice. Awesome. Got it on. And this is a simulation of what we expected to see in lab. As you can see, the average radius of the crystalline solution grows over time because smaller crystals shrink 
and larger crystals grow.